So my name is Amy Marish. I am also known as Spots in the Community on IRC. I am the Chair of the Diversity and Inclusion Working Group, one of the elected members of the User Committee, and a core reviewer for the OpenStack Ansible project. That's a lot of things. Can you speak about how someone can get involved with each of those things? <laughs> well, let's start with getting involved with the projects. Yes. We have the first contact SIG as well as several mentoring programs such as Outreachy, the currently called the Cohort Mentoring Program, which is designed so that there are several mentors with a bunch of mentees and you can come in and out within the group which has a common purpose as you graduate. So like if it's the first patch group, you know, realistically after your first patch if you want to stop being mentee or contributing become or become a mentor, then you can just leave or you stay on. Um, the advantage of having more experienced mentees in the groups, of course, is to help those others. So those are two different ways you can get involved on the project side. Um, as far as diversity and inclusion, we meet every other Monday, I believe, at 1500 UTC, but someone would have to double check that. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, we just had the time change. Yes. So um, with that group, everyone is welcome at any time to any of the meetings. We have our discussions on the foundation mailing list with the diversity tag in the subject line. We try not to spam the channel too much because it is the main foundation list. So it's usually just, you know, important messages we want to convey like events we had at the summit or meeting reminders. Um, so most of the conversations do take place in IRC. As far as the user committee, anyone again is invited to our meetings. It is two hours before the diversity meeting every Monday. Could you uh, get more specific about what the user committee, uh, who that's for? Yeah, so the user committee is designed to be the bridge between users and operators and the projects themselves, as well as the foundation. So we work with the ambassadors, the user group leaders. Um, often the foundation will contact us about companies that are interested in using OpenStack and want to you know, get a little more information. So we'll actually have meetings with companies. So the user com committee will often meet with companies and, as well as with the foundation at the same time and just answer any questions they have about implementation. Um, everyone in the user group at this time is an operator or a former operator. So we have that experience when we interact with companies. Cool. And how do people get in touch? I understand it, it meets two hours before I know. every Monday. And every Monday versus every other Monday. Um, the user committee actually has a separate email list, user-committee at list.openstack.org. And we're, all of us are members on there. And of course, you can reach us in the IRC channel, which is OpenStack users. You no, know, OpenStack dash UC. And I feel like there was a third one you said as well. Um, ah, OSA. So I kind of mentioned the mentoring earlier in the first contact SIG. And those are great ways of getting involved in the community. Um, as a contributor, we also at the summits and at Open Infra Days, we hold the uh, Stream Institute training, which helps get you all set up, gives you a little idea of governance behind everything, and will have you do a fake first patch to the sandbox. What What was the first version of OpenStack you installed? Grizzly. <laughs> With no instructions. Shut up. Yeah. Really? The, the documentation that we've gotten over the last three years is so... <laughs> I'm such a bad influence on him. <laughs> In the last three years, I would say the documentation for installations and troubleshooting has improved milestones. Um, one thing we do with the user committee is work with the ops meetup folks, and they're also working on upgrading all the ops docs. So we have the ops docs SIG, mainly just for ownership of the repos. But um, that is designed for improving the HA guide 
and all the other operation type guides. And what are your plans for train, if any? Hmm. We just did the user, well, we've got the user survey open, which will run until I believe actually they're hoping to have results for that for this year's um, survey in Shanghai. Um, we just completed it and presented here in Denver the results from the diversity survey that we did last year. So one of the highlights I feel is that as gender identification has increased, we went from male, female, I prefer not to say, to having a full and complete list. Um, now we actually had some discussions on this at the survey results section because we used Mozilla's list, which has gender queer, gender neutral, gender, I mean, at least 10 to 15. And it was pointed out that transgender was missing. Now, we didn't drop it. We believe that Mozilla excluded it because of all the other choices. But it was really pointed out to us that people might declare more than one, as well as someone who is transgender might have picked male or female. So if we had the transgender and we allowed things to be multiple choice, that we could actually, even though we can't tie it together, we would have more complete data. So we're still digesting it. I think I'm the only one who has so far gone through the survey results because I was putting together the um, presentation. But we've got a few things to work on. Um, geography was a big one, time zones. Language came up again. Um, it was, and IRC was very popular. Um, the people wanted open tools. Um, so, you know, one feature of WeChat is that you can translate as you go. However, we, I also learned that the Chinese government knows exactly where you are. So that I don't believe is a viable option. Um, but making sure that when people are running IRC meetings, you pause for a minute or two after you type something large. So if someone's using a Google Translator or some other translator, they have a chance to understand what was just said and then can work on their reply. Um, I personally do that because, you know, you can be typing the whole time, entire time and you're, the rest of your meeting's quiet or they're typing in the background and you don't know which. So you need to learn to have your pauses in your typing. Now, if you're continuing a, a thought that you, was so large that it needs more, yes, you do that quickly. But you need to have those pauses in between. And always ask, you know, does anyone else have anything to add, you know? And they could just say, one sec, I'm working on it, you know, and that way you know what's going on. Is there an alternative to IRC? Or, like, I feel like you've just said exactly why we need, we're need we staying on IRC. Yes, and it's open. It's open. Whereas exactly. a lot of companies are on Slack, but you can, their companies can also monitor their Slack and their logs. And we're all about the four opens, or the fifth open if you want to consider Open Minds, which was Intel's number five. What are the four opens for someone who doesn't know? Open source, open community, open development, and open design. So everything takes place in the open. The discussions on what should go in and which the PTG is today, you know, everyone's deciding, you know, what they're going to be working on and, you know, discussing how to do certain things. So you have your open design, open development, everything's in GitHub, open community, everyone's welcome, and open source. Everybody can use it. An open mind. Open mind was interesting, and it's really a good concept. Um, she described it in three different chunks, but the part I liked best is just be mindful of others. <laughs> it's interesting, you know, starting a community, and this one has influenced me so much that I want to have the four opens. I talked to the Zool team. And they said, we're more than welcome to move our open source project under open dev, as long as we're willing to use Garrett, which I would prefer to use Garrett, you know. And a lot of that is, you know, we become so comfortable using our tools that we don't want to use other tools. Of course. And it's also sometimes a barrier because if someone's used to a GitHub pull request and then they have to go through the Garrett system yeah. until they get totally used to it, then that's foreign and you don't like that. You know, but now everyone who's been using it went from, I hate Garrett too. I love Garrett, I don't want to use anything else. Is 
there, uh, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to add? We are definitely in a time of change, going from OpenStack Summit to Open Infrastructure Summit. I think it's going to help us grow our community. Um, we just had two projects be voted from the board to become graduated projects, um, Kata Containers, which graduated like a month ago, and Zoll, which we've been using for at least a year within the community, graduated on Sunday. Um, and you know, if you don't, the numbers that Zool is going through with tests and everything, I don't think anyone else has more of a demand than we're putting on this thing. Um, so, you know, here's this great CICD. It's totally open source, and anyone can use it either by coming under the open dev namespace, as long as they're open source and willing to use Garrett and all our other fun stuff. And or just to install it in a house like some companies are already doing. Is there, you started to say, I realize that there's a bit of a, a shift with the switch um, from OpenStack to Open Infrastructure Summit. Is there a secondary, but you think it's a good thing or like, you know what I mean? There were definitely less OpenStack talks to make room for the others. But at the same time, the ones I went to see were in the open dev track. Um, and I try to get to some Kubernetes ones, but sometimes all the hats drag me into other places if a friend needed me during the one Kubernetes one I was going to go to. So it does give us a chance to see what other communities are doing, talk to those other communities, and then combine forces to do stuff like OpenStack Helm. You know. Helm exists, and we've got it working within OpenStack, and we have a project. And what are you doing within Project Teams Gathering? I have been in the OpenStack Ansible room, cool. um, and we actually got through our... You got through your list? We got through our list. What? Yep, so we're in there hacking. <laughs> nice. Okay, here's to uh, efficiency. We talk to each other constantly. Yeah. Um, we are very operator focused. So if an operator comes to us and says, I just installed blah, 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 I'm getting this error and we realize it's a bug, we have pretty quick turnaround because we have to. And it doesn't hurt that Mohammed's running it in production. Cool. Very cool. Well, thank you for coming. Today. You're welcome.